I like I like yeah. Queen Amidala in the background. I like the you know the yeah. fillet. The one in front looks uh, old. Like she, not, she looks a bit not her. She looks like she's been doing twelve hour shifts. Yeah, the- <laughs> she looks a bit haggard. She's like you know what, ruling a country it's it's not an easy job. <laughs> Well, greetings and hello there, everybody. It's me, your beloved Nooch Father, all knowing, all loving, all seeing, all scribing, and all gerbling. Gentlemen, what's up? We're here with Scribe and Gerbil today. Of course, Gerbil's always here, and the Scribble has joined us for a special event to talk about Queen Amidala, maybe some Datacrons, and then, of course, rank his movies. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? Fantastic. Thank you so much, Nooch. How are you doing today, buddy? I am outstanding as always, and I said it right before we came on. I'm going to say it again. You don't want to hear it, but you are so professional, and and you you just you just sound amazing, and you're so crisp and clean, and and we're just a couple goofballs here talking. So, but it's good to see. You. It's been a while since we. I think it's been several, many, many months since we connected. Yeah, yeah. I think we did. We did. Uh, we did do a collab. Well, maybe six months ago, something like that. It was fun. It was, I I have Slacker now, so you know I, I'm a big boy again. <laughs> Did, so. did you buy the bundle to get him? Oh, it cuts me to the bone. Literally, I unlocked Slacker, and two days later, the packs came out. So I blew hundreds of Cairo tech, hundreds of signal data, and they're like, oh, by the way, you could have got it for nine ninety nine. like two days afterwards. I was like, you guys hate me. You're like, you just hate me, don't you? But hey, hey it, you, it you took it for the team. I did, I did, and they, my, my, my viewership has never let me forget it. They said, <laughs> "Yeah, how was that time with the Lightspeed bundle?" Scribe, I was like, "Yeah, shut up, that's painful." So, uh, yeah. which GL you farming now then? Because that may be the next Lightspeed bundle. Um, my next GL is whatever GL they release. Uh, I'm, I'm done. I like Journey Guide, finish, yeah. complete. Well, yeah. technically, no. Technically, Jar Jar. He's in the Journey Guide, kind of. Ah, yeah. He's yeah, got a yeah, placeholder. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I'm actually, for the first time in Forever, which is a song, uh, I have it nothing is. in the Journey Guide to get. So I'm I'm, are you, I'm done. I've completed it. Are you chasing Jar Jar? So I am. Be able yeah, to get I him actually, like they want? Just today, I got Tarples to Relic 5. Um, so Same. I am looking forward to... I, I don't... I haven't finished off boss nas i need 90 shards of boss nas i figured i could go easy on him because he's likely to be in shipments at least before the jar jar event comes around so i thought i'd be okay on him save the whaling for the later gungans but yeah it's cool you know i i actually agreed with you but purple may is kind of one making me question that because historically mm-hmm. we'd get a character every month right the inquisitors were one a month uh dr apris folks were one a month etc but if i'm not mistaken these are two weeks apart yeah um that's really fast so if we get the next two in the same cadence one more this month one in early april Mm -hmm. Jar may hit the board by second third week of april which is in a month it's it's possible and if that happens then nas may not be farmable he might not be maybe yeah. Um, yeah. What I would envisage is if, because uh, I'm actually largely in agreement with you. I think I think Jar Jar's coming thick and fast. I think he's going to hit the hollow tables real soon. Like you're not going to have time to properly farm the Gungans. Just kind of like what happened with Bo Katan Mandalore, right? What I would envisage though is when Jar Jar does drop, that there's likely going to be at least a gang gamble pack, similar to what happened with Keller and Beck, and. Mm. Um, the Bogotan yeah. requirements, like $50 to get 50 shards of each thing, that sort of thing. If, And that's on the proviso if Boss Nass, at least, is not in weekly shipments for at least like one week of the event. Um, but I do agree with you. I do agree with you. I think he's coming real soon. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he is like Bogotan and turns up once a month to, for, to kind of incentivize people to spend more. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about the difficulty level of the event to unlock him. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think that the recent ones have been really, really that bad overall. But yeah, when it is a one a month thing and it does come out really quick, you know, like the, the requirements, I think, are just Relic 5, right? Yep. But I'm wondering, are we going to need Relic 7, Relic 8 mm-hmm. on the tanks? Uh, we'll see. We'll have to see. There's, where there's yeah. a will, there's a way. You know, I, I, Absolutely. I'd like to think that Relic 5, you've got most of the tools available to you. You know, you, you'll be able to put all your 6E modding, 6A modding if you want. Um, I imagine it'll be strategy, provided you've got the Zetas on there. I imagine it'll be okay. Yeah. I agree with but that. You going for any of the Omicrons? Territory battle, territory war? 
I have no armies available. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's that we just got Bane, man. I, I've only got one army on Bane. I had Bo-Katan Mandalore. She wanted a bunch of armies, and like everybody's just like, feed me. I've got no Zetas. I'm like Zeta broke. <laughs> yeah, I used to have hundreds, and now I'm like, I have yeah twelve. And did you see how yeah. sad he was? His face look when he said, "I have no omis." <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> I have no omied out. Yeah, Aww. all omied out. It's 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 a painful reality that we live in right now, where everything has got like double, triple Zeta, double, triple army. It's um, yeah, it's painful. It's painful. So I guess that's a good segue then into our lovely queen, right? Right, mm. who's coming to the board and. How many Zetas and Omis is she going to want? Oh, my God. Three yeah. and three, probably, yeah. She she does have I, three Zetas, three Omis. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Three and three. Oh, my gosh. Nooch, you haven't actually looked at the kit yet, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I've been working a lot. I work 12-hour uh, days, Sunday to Tuesday. And I so, I mean, I usually take a look at stuff, but I wanted to leave this one because I knew we were going to be talking about it. So I'll tell you my first impression. I don't I don't like the art. Like, mm. I like I like yeah. Queen Amidala in the background. I like the you know the yeah. full head. the one in front looks uh, old. Like she, not, she looks a bit not her. She looks like she's been doing twelve hour shifts. Yeah, the, <laughs> she looks a bit haggard. She's like you know what, ruling a country it's it's not an easy job. She's stressed, man. She's stressed. I, I you know there. The, there's a weird thing to me. Okay, so the background in the red robe and the poofy hair thing. So her lips, li her lips, her lips look really small because that red line, right, in the middle of it. But then the other one where she's not wearing the makeup, her lips are like really, really wide, which creates this odd dynamic to me. It's it's Botox. It's Botox Amidala. That's yes. what it is. That's what Botox. I couldn't figure out what it is, but that's oh, what man. it is. When I was coming it's into this, like, like, why are we going to talk here? about the Queen Amidala uh, kit? I was like, yeah, let's talk about her lips. Let's talk about Padme's lips, man. That's where we're going to go. This is where you come <laughs> for the high we can content. on this show. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look here. So uh, uh, key attributes, decoy with permaton gives Queen Amidala. And I called that a long time ago. I'm like, they're going to have a, you, you got to have that, right? Um, yeah. HOTs and uh, hots and pots mechanic. I don't know what is that. What are hots and pots? We're going to get there uh, in a over time and protection over time. Okay, thank you. Okay. I had the exact same Great. reaction when I first read it. I knew hots was heal over time. I was like, pots poking over time? No, that can't be right. <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, hots. Is this like some kind of slang for got the hots or something? I was like, we're not going there. <laughs> I mean, yes, but no. Well, you know, yeah. So you guys have looked at the kit. So what is there a place mm -hmm. to focus? I don't, I don't necessarily want to get in here and read through the kit all the way through. I, I think. I'm not, that doesn't thrill me. Unless you guys want to, then we can, but uh, I'll leave it up to you guys a little bit. Uh, there's um, one thing that stands out to me, but I'd love to hear what Scribe thinks first. Oh, oh, right. Um, the, the, the thing that stands out to me mostly is it makes it awkward because we, we discussed it earlier, triple Zeta, triple Omni. Now, usually you don't have to just throw every Zeta and every Omni on a character that comes out. You know, you like look at Bane, for example. Bane, I know we're looking at the most extreme case of the most powerful, like, Conquest non-GL character to ever come to the game, but you don't need triple Zetas, uh, triple Omnis on Bane to make him work. He, he works perfectly well with one, right, if you get that rule of two. Mm -hmm. If I feel like looking at Queen Amidala's kit, I'm like, oh, I really do want to get this army, but I also kind of want to get the leadership army, and the last army looks kind of useful, so that's that's kind of painful to me. Triple army, yes, GAC, which is good. Um, but, oh, man, that's going to be expensive on the mats. It's going to be real expensive on the mats. That's, that's my uh, concern right now. And we've got Gungans as well, and we've got the real big news, I suppose. Sorry. Like, the real star of the show. I'm going all over the place here, but has to be the characters that we're not talking about, which is the two support characters coming. <laughs> yes. If you look just above and the basic, then you... <laughs> Wait, what? It says there's two support... Where, where's that? Who's supposed to be so, in her squad? Yeah, it's in the FAQ, just above the... Uh, it says, who's supposed to be in her squad? Designed to work alongside Queen Amidala R, Master, Qui-Gon Jinn, and Padawan, Obi-Wan. So the two Galactic Republic characters that they previously referenced are now named Master Qui-Gon and Padawan Obi-Wan. I love that. I, I'm, I'm so excited for Phantom Menace this year. It, it, this is, 
this is so overdue and I've been calling for it forever. But yeah, what? So, all right, I love that. That's true. Uh, I, and I, I think I actually saw that was kind of part of Arnold's video about it. But I, I did. I just looked at the mm -hmm. thumb. I really haven't a chance to look. So that's yeah. We're the end of the. Third. I think that it's holy cow, it's really guys. Good. I can't believe you missed that. Well, no, I, I haven't looked. I haven't looked at anything. Sorry, I, that was. Um, oh, it's at the top. I, I don't know. I don't read. Reading is overrated. You know, some people say reading is fundamental. I say reading is overrated. Rio, yeah. who who needs who needs reading when you've got well, YouTube videos to exactly talk to stuff? Uh, exactly. We, we wouldn't have so, we wouldn't have a, a secondary job if people enjoyed reading. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, her kit is uh, just FYI. It is uh, roughly eight hundred and ninety words. So it's not a short kit. Mm -mm. They like their novels. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a long one. So uh, the thing about the getting uh, Master Qui Gon though and Padawan Obi Wan, I think that they are great characters. Of course, um, I mean <laughs> front and center in the show, and I'm I'm excited to get them. But it, what I would have liked honestly would have been to get, and I'm trying to recall the name. I'm looking it up. Captain Panaka. Yeah. I really, really would have liked to get Captain Panaka. And the concern or the wonder I have, perhaps, is if she's going to be fighting along two Jedi, um, who else is going to fill out this team? Mm -hmm. are, are there going to be more marquees down the road? Is it going to, you know, really going to be a team of three with the perma taunting uh, handmade? Or do we need to pull two more Jedi out of reserve? Mm -hmm. Or. I think it's going to be Galactic Republic characters rather than Jedi. I think the only reason we're using Master Qui-Gon Jinn and, and Padawan Obi is because of the film more than anything. You know, they were with her for a lot of it. And I think, yes, I agree with you. I expected Captain Panaka because it makes sense, you know, her personal bodyguard, yeah. right? So that makes sense thematically. However, from a monetary perspective, I think CG and Disney looked at it and say, who are people going to spend money on? Are they going to spend money on Captain Panaka? Who gets <laughs> yeah. replaced? Or are they going to spend money on Ewan McGregor? Hundred percent, hundred percent. And so, yeah, you know, like... absolutely. So here's so my question: If, well, if we oh, are, go ahead. you go. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say. So if we do pull two Galactic Republics, and you're right, the, the Galactic Republic is is just all through her kit. Gr this, gr that. So I'm looking at all the Galactic Republics over on Swaga, and of course we've got a bunch of clone troopers. And thematically, that doesn't make any sense because there were there were no clone troopers yet, not publicly at least. Mm -hmm. um, and that pretty much leaves like Clone Wars, Chewie, uh, mm -hmm. Cup, and Jedi. Um, mm -hmm. Bad Batch thematically wouldn't make sense. So th that's why I was leaning towards Jedi. And mm -hmm. I think that there are some clues in the Datacrons actually. Um, mm -hmm that that uh when we we can circle around to this later but a bit of a datacron spoiler um if you haven't seen those ladies and gentlemen there is a datacron level nine for kit fisto kayati mundi um there's another one in there too i'm trying to find him no maybe not there's two for dooku unless that's a typo um but two mm -hmm. level nines for dooku yeah, but yeah, okay. I guess it is just yeah. those. There's Mace Windu also, and Keller and Beck. So mm. we've got Beck, Mundi, Kit Fisto, and uh, oh, and Jedi and Cal. But so I'm wondering about the Kit Fisto and and Cam in particular, um, because also with the raid on Naboo, we need more than the people they've announced. We got the five Gungans, Amidala, her two. Mm -hmm. likely some separatists uh someone in my guild or in my discord made a great spreadsheet i can try to share if i can find it but we're definitely going to need more characters in there and it looks like mm -hmm. i think realistically uh jedi council are going to be the most likely ones which would be get fisto and cam mm -hmm. is this it Nucci, you're just sitting there with your mouth hanging open bro well I, okay? I i haven't looked at this it looks like it's a, I mean, Jedi resistance is separate to set. Resistance makes so much sense in there. Um, but it looks like it's way more characters than it normally is. Or am I just, is it just kind of hitting me hard? I guess it's just hitting me hard at the beginning. But um, my, my uh, thought with, yeah, my thoughts on all this is like, where are we going, right? Who's the galactic <clears throat> legend going to be? Because if you release all the Gungans and you release Padme and Qui-Gon and, and um, uh, the other guy, Obi-Wan, um, 
and that's all released by the by the third conquest. So that's going to be like we're talking April, May, like July, right? Somewhere in mm -hmm. that range, mm -hmm. or June or July. Um, well, June, July is when we start to see the characters kind of be coming out for the next Galactic Legend. So are we looking at that Palpatine? Are we looking at? Um, I've I've I'm kind of honking for. Um, um, Darth Tyrannus. I, I I'd prefer to see that. To, we've already got Palpatine. Um, I'd rather see Darth Tyrannus and like put him out there in Clone Wars form in the game. I think that'd be awesome. But I mean, where's that all leading us? I guess because I don't mm -hmm. still don't, I don't think they're gonna put a Conquest characters requirement for a GL. I don't think they'll have Padme as a GL requirement no. that quickly behind it. Yeah. I've actually discussed this a little bit on my stream, but nothing without diving into like into the nuts and bolts of things, but I've come to a similar sort of conclusion. Like H1 in Galaxy of Heroes is just jam-packed. It's like full to the brim. We've got Gungans with Jar Jar. We've had Stap. We've got Queen Amidala. We've got two Marquis. And then we're bushing into the new raid. There's no way we're getting a GL straight away. I think once the raid drops, that the Phantom Menace content is actually done. I think they move on. And I think we go on to whatever's coming next. So I don't even think that a GL is going to relate to the Phantom Menace. Because I'm thinking about it, who are they going to do? Like, they could do Chancellor Palpatine, but then it'll be two, two, two Palpatine GLs. How is it going to work exactly? Who's it going to go with? They're not going to do a light side one from Phantom Menace because they've done Queen Amidala. Who, who else are they going to try and throw out? We've already got a Qui-Gon We've got an Obi-Wan. It's not going to be like Grandmaster Yoda or anything like that. So it just doesn't fit. So I feel like we're going to go off off script a little bit. Um, potentially, we could start working on Ahsoka content. Whether that means GL or even a new capital ship by the end of the year, I don't know. Um, but I actually think it's just going to be something unexpected towards the end of the year. What if there is no GL this year? Mm -hmm. Could happen. Actually, I'm leaning towards... I mean, if I were to, to place a bet, I would lean towards Chancellor Palpatine. And I mm -hmm. think that it would be a, a mixed squad, similar to Jabba with Leia and Skiffguard, right? That it would be both light, dark side. Uh, and, mm -hmm. I, and I could see um, quite a few other characters coming in. The Marquis, like, I don't know the guy's name, the blue the blue guy with the long, oh. uh, the Twilight guy. Because um, he's yeah, in several of the name. films. Yeah, he's he's omnipresent, um, but but you know Jar Jar is the one who nominates Palpatine, uh, mm -hmm. and then of course Amidala, uh, Palpatine, if I'm not mistaken, was from Naboo, right? And we got the new Naboo raid, mm -hmm. so there's there's a bunch of connections there. Um, I think I, I, I think I think Scribble makes a good point here. It's like, yeah, yeah, where because. For the last couple of years, those characters have been released, like July, August, September, in that range, the, the marquees for the Galactic Legend. And mm. by then, they're going to be designing the new or the next raid, because we'll be three, mm. four months yeah. into the raid, um, the new raid. I, that's a really good observation. I hadn't really thought about it, but... Um, I just think it ties off nicely, and I, I think, yeah. you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the actual anniversary of The Phantom Menace is like 18th or 19th of May. So it yeah, would all sort of like it would be like okay we've done the anniversary I know when it did when we did um, mm. Return of the Jedi anniversary that kind of did drag on for a long lot longer we got you know two GLs out of it basically right well yeah yeah two GLs out of it basically so that did drag on longer I just I don't know why I've just got this feeling and it's not really scientific based <laughs> it's just that I think they're just going to be like okay we're done with that we're moving on um, and I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we don't get one of either a new capital ship or a GL. Because I just feel like this, yeah. we've only got six months left of the year to get these stuff in. And it's going to take, you know, a GL will need multiple marquees, probably four marquees if we're going to use Leia as an example, right? Four marquees, even if they release them every two weeks, that's still two months. So if the raid comes yeah. out in July, August, you know, we're already pushing towards the end of the year then. You know, we're looking at like October um, for the marquees just to get out without any break before they actually release a GL. And normally we get a legendary at the end of the year as well. I'm like, how are they going to fit in a legendary, a galactic legend, and a capital ship in a like a six month period? It feels really tight on the time scale. So, I think a ship is almost a, a certainty, though. Mm, um, they usually it, do. It, it's separate enough that I think that you have just two or three marquees for that, some relic tins perhaps, and 
So Here we are. We don't really have a, any extra ships at the moment. You know, like when the Leviathan came out, we had a bunch of Sith ships sitting there doing nothing, right? But now I think all the ships in the game are tied. Most, I should say most, but the vast majority of the ships, there's no like faction of ships that's sitting there unused. So if they came out with that, that Galactic Republic capital ship you've been talking about, Gerbil, or a, a separatist capital ship, well, then it kind of, I mean, Galactic Republic is a better option because they do, there are a few ships extra in the Galactic Republic faction. And then they add, they add two or three ships along the way. But um, yeah, separatists only have five ships. You, you put a separatist uh, capital ship out there and this malevolence is just gone unless they drop like 10 more ships on us all of a sudden. Well, the thing about the malevolence, though, is it operates really well with just a few ships. Yeah. Like if, if you get one or two droid ships, malevolence can hold its own. Like it's, it summons in those additional vulture droids. It doesn't need the geos. So theoretically, you could take the geos away from malevolence, put that towards a new capital ship, and you could release one droid ship for the malevolence and it would probably be okay um i'm not saying that's what they're going to do but i'm saying it could work and i do agree the galactic republic has got a lot more um weight behind it which doesn't really have a home it just seems very odd well, to release the marauder with that much synergy yeah. with the endurance only for them to be like yeah we're not going to do anything with that just consolidate power and go to the negotiator instead no. there's hmm. also a lot of of Galactic Republic pilots already in game. That would be very, very mm. easy to just throw out the ships as marquees. Uh, I mean, you pretty much take your pick of any of the Jedi. Grandmaster Yoda, for example. Um, just give him a green version of Ahsoka's ship. There you go. Or would it? Yeah, it would be the same as Ahsoka's, I think. Um, but also, we, you know, Dooku could have a ship. Asajj could have a ship. Yep. All right. I think that what's quite possible to wrap up the uh, Phantom Menace could be uh, uh, the droid command ship. I'm trying to think of what it is. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the name of it. Yeah. Wrap that up at the end of the summer. Um, again, though, as you were saying, how do you, how do you break up your fleet, right? Do you send the droid ships over there to be with it, which would make sense? Would Newt be the pilot or uh, would it be Trench because he's the only admiral without a ship? I mean, to me, it would make sense to make it Newt because staff is supposed to replace Newt, freeing him up to go somewhere else. So what's the incentive to gear up Newt? Capital ship. So, I'm saying we'll you're see. not gearing up your Newt for Trench. I mean, it's such a good team. He's got what? Oh, no, he doesn't have No, that. no. <laughs> you don't need Newt, as it turns out. You don't need Newt or Mace. You should always send Newts. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the irony is not lost on me that CG spent all this time sort of gearing up for Bane to be like, hey, look, you can take your what away from your C because Bane comes out and massively elevates him. And it does. It's just, why do that when you can just throw Bane with some trashy Sith and do the same thing? Yeah. And then what can stay exactly where he is with C? More low banner victories in GAC. Well, just what we always want. Certainly they're going to nerf Bane, right? I mean, the intention, you know, whatever they say, our intention was not the int our intention was not to have Bane soloing Galactic mm. Legend Leia. Um, I mean, that has to be I the next it. post, right? I mean, come on. Well, I, I well, think we'll they'll see. wait for this first version of Conquest to come back so they can get people more invested in pushing for Bane and then nerf him. Um, <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. They, they want people buying that Conquest so, Pass Plus. <laughs> oh, this is the first time I didn't buy any of the Conquest. Oh, really? I, I didn't get it at all for this whole last round. No, I normally buy the $10 pack. I yeah, just feel so. like it's one of the better deals in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's just kind of my subscription to play Swaga, I guess. But this time, there was something about this particular round, and it wasn't Bane as the character. There was just something about this round that I was like, I just don't want to support this. And I, I don't remember what it was. It something that like really set me off the first, the first go. It might have been just the the complexity or the 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 broadness of the feats because they were really broad uh, it was by a the lot end of, of it I, oh my gosh it was a lot now by by the the third round of it though i i i red created it on like day seven day six maybe mm -hmm. uh, i found a whole bunch of synergies and ways to just cheese a lot of them but it's still like it it really annoyed me and I was like, nah, you didn't earn these $10 this time. Not this Not time. this time, CG. <laughs> no, fair no. enough. <laughs> you lose your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's pull this back around to um, to Amidala. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, okay, one. so the, the, the thing that really 
stands out to me and and i'm i have not really got my head around the whole kit at all there is it is thick uh but the thing there are two things that stand out to me that i just i question this one was so somebody posted a couple days ago on reddit and they were like what do you want to see in her kit and immediately i put ascension gun and then we got the kit and holy heck it's there ascension gun <laughs> but like what so what does Ascension Gun do? Okay, so if you haven't seen the animation, she shoots straight up and flies off screen like Superman or Wonder Woman, Superwoman. It's just like, I'm out of here. And no, that is not an escape mechanic like C-3PO or Watt or Yoda. It's What it does is it it calls everybody else to assist. Well, and, and, it, summons <laughs> and it summons a handmaiden. So yes. she she flies up and the decoy comes in and then she pops back in. And now which one is which? Is it the old haggard looking Padme that's the real one? Or is it the is it the queen with the with the lips? Which one is Padme? Well, exactly. I'm not sure where the loop of the video starts and ends. Does the does the handmaid appear after she goes away? No, after they're both I on think. the table this Oh. Yeah, so uh, Yeah, I don't I'm a know. I'm confused. The, yeah, in my this is day, a chicken and the egg situation here. Right. The hand, they're both there. The handmaiden just disappears. And then she's like, look at me. I'm going to fly away. Fix your graphics, Capital Games. Come on. Shoddy behavior. So that, that really confuses me. The second thing is that, so, okay, so the handmaiden has permaton until she's defeated. Mm -hmm. When she's defeated, shenanigans happen. The enemy who defeated her gets doubt, I guess. And then Padme summons a new handmaid. The problem I have with this is it's literally Amidala saying, hey, um, I need someone else to die. Hey, you, come here, come here, come here. Stand here, please. Can y'all shoot head her? On. <laughs> exactly. And it's just like, it's like, oh, oh, strike. We need another, we need another handmaid and somebody bring me someone else. It's well, that's how it went. I mean, you know, what do you want? The, 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 they killed half of them off in the, in the first couple of movies. What, you know, right? I only remember one well, died, I know, I was really one maybe... died. Oh, okay. Mm. I, I wouldn't sign up for the job. Not that I think I could pull off the Padme look, but if, if the job were always, your job is to die for the queen, I'd be like, well, I mean, can I do some admin work instead? I could be at the back of the background. Maybe I can arrange your meet and greets, something like that. Maybe some yes. accounting or something. Yeah, yeah. Let me Let me balance the books, okay? I can do that. That's fine. I have to say, this is the most informative episode I think I've ever been on with you guys. <laughs> well, you also got to think, if you sign up to be a handmaiden, it really helps your Hollywood career because, you know, Keira Knightley and uh, yep. uh, what's, the, what's the other one? Um, Natalie Pullman? No, 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 no. Uh, what oh, are the, the other, other handmaid? What? Did you say the other the other handmaid? Uh, hand, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, there's another handmaiden, that, um, and she's been in a bunch of those, uh, like, Judd Apatow comedies, and I can't remember her name. Oh. Um, but you guys talk. I'm going to look it up here. Hang on a second. So I, I'm skimming her kit, and there are multiple mm -hmm. exclusions that if all allies are Galactic Republic and there are no scoundrels, who, who are yep. they calling out with the scoundrel? I mean, come on. That's an easy one, Newt. Who's the most powerful Galactic Republic scoundrel? Also a Conquest character. One of the very first. Oh, Cat, right? Cat. Yeah. No, yeah, they don't want Cat going. Yeah, because Cat's a scoundrel. Yeah, I always forget she's a scoundrel. Yeah, huh. yeah, they don't want they don't want Cat okay. to be messing around with Padme Amidala. Fifty percent additional offense and health. Yeah, probably not a good idea. Although she needs doesn't she need an online force hmm. user in the team as well to make that happen? I, I think so. Um, oh no, it could be Jedi as well. Actually, light side Jedi, an online force user. So maybe the um, yeah, um, Master Qui Gon and and Obi Wan would fill that. Um, so yeah, they just don't want Cat being used there. Not that anybody would, because realistically, who's going to take Cat away from JMK and just have a terrible GL? It, uh, right. Nobody. Exactly. Except that, for those that people happening. that have JMK, I guess. But um, yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. just to stop the Cat being used, I think, or stop people being tempted to use Cat. Um, I don't know. I, it, like for me, it, I just look at the kit and I'm like, it's got a lot of bulk. There is a lot of yes. survivability, a lot of thickness to that team, a lot of recovery. A lot of recovery. Um, so maybe we're you actually going to have a defensively viable team. Who knows? Because at the moment, nothing holds really 
on defense in in TW and GAC. We've just got so much powerhouses out on the in the game right now that you just tear through everything. So maybe they're trying to yeah. course correct a little bit here. Um, cuz Gungans are Yeah, that's kind of my I have that same experience right now in GAC that you know, everything that every match I go in, I should win. And if I don't, usually it's I'm not paying attention and I'm misplaying or just Using the wrong team, you're right. Because like it doesn't matter if you're putting any more in defense, relic nine, malgus, or what. There's mm. so many ways to defeat them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Everybody's like GLs don't hold. We live in an era at the okay. moment where GLs have just got non-GL counters. You know, like you know the thing the that get me the <laughs> my most holds. I get the most holds still with my my all relic nine walks because people perpetually underestimate that. Or Iden, who I geared up to all Relic 8 for mm. the raid. So the whole mm. Relic 8 Iden team, people look at it, they're like, Iden? Okay. And they'll throw their Relic 8, 9 Wampa at it and just get decimated because at that higher level, she Iden holds up. Of damage. Yeah. And if yeah. you've got scouts yeah, in there as does. well, you do have an irresistible daze, and that will shut right. down one of Wampa's so, activities. So my point is, like, I'm getting hold, as you're saying, not from the shinies and the mm. newest and the latest grades. I'm getting hold from older stuff that people are forgetting about or underestimating. Yeah. Yeah. It's usually how it goes yeah. these days. I mean, so, some GLs still hold, but it's not reliable. There's no there's no surefire way no. Of, of getting a hold right now. So maybe, like I said, maybe the, all this bulk is to try and either time out or or um, actually have something that has some level of defensive viability. Because it usually gets figured out within within a week of GAC being active. There's been just like hundreds of people have gone in and battled this team. This is all the collective evidence that we've got. This is how you beat this team. Jobs are good and move on, get your 65 banners, have a good time. Um, yeah, although and- with the upcoming Datacron set, uh, there there is some pause in there. Um, talk about power creep and... Mm-hmm. Some unexpected synergies that, well, maybe not unexpected, just unexpected things that, uh, you know, like talking about holding, like, have you guys had a chance to look at these? I haven't seen it at all. I'm d- Looking at right. you is the first time I even so, knew that it existed, so. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> all right. So on your level one, two, was it two, four, five, seven, eights, you know, you've got random stats, right? There is, there is. Not likely, but there is a possibility of getting 120% bonus health or protection. Huge. My uh, yeah, so gonna that's going <laughs> yeah, to shut down a lot of counters, especially like CLS is where you're just normally just going to like pound through something. Yeah, if they're, if they're cranking out 120% extra health or 80%, you may not shoot through them as quickly. And there goes that, that counter. So that's something to watch out for. But... Um, yeah, there's some there's some stuff in here that's like, like, uh, and, and some of them are quite bulky. Like um, Kit Fisto does not look like one of the better ones, but it's really long. Like Kit Fisto has 100% health steal at the start of the battle. Grant guard to all other Galactic Republic Jedi until Kit Fisto defeated. Kit Fisto and all allies with guard of 100% accuracy. They have their their health and protection equalized at the start of each ally's turn. Kid Fisto attacks out of turn. Whenever he attacks out of turn, recovers 20% health and protection and lowers the cooldown of turn of tide by one. Whenever Fisto, see, it's still going. Whenever mm-hmm. he uses a special ability, all Galactic Republic Jedi gain retribution for two turns. Whenever he uses a basic, the spell all buffs on the target. So you pair that, like that equalization every turn with all that bonus health or protection. Mm. Uh, that's going to get pretty defensively nasty. That's going to be horrendous with Keller and Beck. Like, Keller and Beck yes. in, in TW with that, like, health, equal, health equalizing and recovering protection as well, and dispels on a basic. You're like, yeah, my God, you're going to have such a hard time killing Keller and Beck. And if you pair that with the extra, I mean, Keller and Beck's got his own level nine. I'll touch on that in a sec. But pair that with, imagine you had like 100% additional protection from your Datacron on a Keller and Beck team, boosting up his Padawai, Padawan's lessons, I think it is. So he's going to be doing uh-huh. ridiculous damage. And then Kit Fisto is going to turn all the Galactic Republic Jedi into Geos, essentially, always equalizing health. Uh, it's yep. going to be Yeah. And pair that with the level six. Have you seen okay. the level sixes? 
Okay, I, look I, at the I first Jedi level six. All right. Welcome back, Nooch. So, so Nooch, now imagine oh, Teller and Beck Territory Wars with a bonus 100% health with the Geo health equalization every turn. Now look at the level six faction Jedi, the first one. While Jedi allies have 100% health, they have 100% offense. Yeah, I saw that. It's a Stormtrooper Han Jedi Datacron is what it is. Mm. Yeah, okay. Now also imagine that with Qui-Gon. You pop Qui-Gon and Anakin nukes. Now he's got even more offense. Yep. If he's yeah, got we, all his we health. Had, we had this level but, six yeah. before. But he would, right? Because when you kill Qui-Gon, they all gain 100% right. health protection. They do. You're right. Yeah. If, if so he had kill healing immunity, you would stop it. But uh -huh. yeah, like, it's lo yeah. locked healing immunity, I mean. It, it would be the only thing that would yeah. stop him from gaining that 100% offense. But it is, it's nasty. It's nasty. Yeah. And they gain advantage. <laughs> God. <laughs> so he's critting. He's going to deal a lot then, of damage. It's, he's going to be doing 1,600% yeah, damage, right? Isn't that, is, or would it be, would it start oh, at the beginning and then ramp up? Um, I, I don't know how it's going to calculate, but I'm pretty sure that Jedi Anakin, when he takes his bonus turn, it's not 100% offense. It's He deals 100% more damage. So it's it's doubling up again. It's, okay. You know, yeah. So it's going to be, yes, he's gaining 100% offense, that's going to deal the damage, and then you're going to double that damage total. So it's more than more than doing 300%. It's more like 400% damage. I don't know if that math works out, but it it, it should be, theoretically. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be, be crazy. Up there. He's going to wipe the board. You kill Qui-Gon, he will wipe the board. With I may have to with. add a couple of relics to my Qui-Gon just for that data. That's fun. Yeah, that, that's why they release <laughs> them, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. It absolutely is. Uh, and then, so, um, there was an... Th there, there appears to be two Count Dooku ones. Um, mm. There's so they they release these in graphics instead of some instead of it as a table for some reason, which I don't understand. I've got uh, the table. CG, you can embed tables on a website. Uh, mine's a graphic, like a JPEG. Mm. Mm. I've got the I've got the. Uh, oh, yeah, it is a graphic. You're right. Image. It's not a, okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right. Yeah. So the the first graph. No, it's a second graphic at the bottom. It says Count Dooku. New, I don't know why it says new. <laughs> That's good. Whenever gains stealth, not whenever he gains stealth, because whenever gains stealth, they recover 100% protection. Who is they? Who is they? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's um, what occurs to me now looking at this is that maybe this duplicate Dooku, it doesn't sound like it reading based on what the abilities are, but we sh this data cron set should have Bane. Oh no, there is a bane. Sorry, yes. there is a bane. There's a bane. Oh, okay, There's ignore a bane. me. I was like, sorry, I, I, I saw Count Dooku and then I saw Geo Spy. I was like, oh, we're done with the Sith. Um, but it's separatist, isn't it? Um, okay, uh, yeah, oh, they're, fine. they're randomized. So yeah, yeah. Sorry. Gaming, recovering protection by itself is pretty nice because he goes into mm. stealth quite often. But mm. then, if you keep going down, you got Bane, then Sidious, right. and then Dooku again. Whenever stuns an enemy, again he. Gains ten percent critical damage stacking and five speed until end of encounter. So I don't know if there's going to be one or two different. Level yeah, do you nines. get both. I, I think it's it's like I just said. It's because there's a separatist tag and there's the Sith tag. So one of them is going to be oh. the, Sith, the Sith level nine for Dooku. One's going to be the separatist level nine for Dooku. I take it. Oh, okay. so I, imagine so I misunderstood the, you then. Okay. Yeah, I think the I think the stealth, the stealth one is going to be his separatist level nine. And the stun one is going to be his Sith level nine. That's that's how I'm okay. reading this at the minute. I might be wrong, but um, that that does yeah. make sense. The Darth Sidious one is also quite lengthy. And what when I read this Darth Sidious one, it actually made me laugh out loud. So it was like, if there are no other active allies at the start of battle, so it's a solo, right? If there are no other active allies, so it turns him into a fulcrum or a wampa. He gains 200% defense, 200% health steal, 200% max health, 200% protection, 100% counter chance, 100% critical chance, 100 speed, immune to days, immune to stun. <laughs> and who even knows how this is going to work, right? It's like, good lord. It's it's like uh, the crystal math of, of, no of data crunch. <laughs> Like, right, start no this cool game, dispel all debuffs and reset all cooldowns. So you're just like AOE, 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 AOE. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. and Whenever he defeats an enemy, recovers all of his health and protection. 
And then if you put on the the hundred percent health or protection from the level three, seven, eight, whatever, and then <laughs> I love it. It's a it's a city crazy. of solo. That's tremendous. That's tremendous. Yeah, it it is. It's. I have it's a question. There's hmm. a there's a Ray data crime. Yeah. So this is that the first Galactic Legend? Have we had Galactic Legends before? Oh. Oh yeah, we had Lord Vader. Then, yes. Yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it, this one is is not the, like we had a Ray one way back when, which was horrendous. It it was like when she goes into ult, her ult does seventy five percent more damage per living ally. So you imagine that if you go into ult with five full a full squad, like her ult would just kill everything. Yeah, right. But this right. this one sounds interesting actually. Ray reviving is kind of like oh that's dirty, that's and dirty. gaining yeah. taking it's a bonus like turn when she revives there. Yeah, I yeah. mean. Does she revive and then whirlwind? And you know, like I mean, I don't know. Um, I mean, technically, she should, right? It. Because she she'll drop below sixty percent right. health. So unless you've used it already before that's happened, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm wondering if it will it trigger Ben reviving again. It probably will. So say you say you killed Ben because you have to kill Ben before you kill Ray, and then Ray revives. She takes a bonus turn. She's I don't know, maybe she'll will win, maybe she'll just lifeblood or something. When the enemy leader takes a turn, I think Ben's probably going to re-revive again. So you're just stuck in a timeout risk all over again, especially with health steal being on the stats for this, as well as health. It's like, oh my God, that's going to be horrendous to, to chew through. Um, it's interesting. I wonder right. how the community is going to react to GL data crimes right. again. Right. And stack that with the level six. Whenever a, a resistance ally is critically hit, they gain one hundred percent critical avoidance and a hundred percent critical chance for oh two Lord. turns. Because it's for two turns, you're basically never going to critically hit them again. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. So it's going to try and help because, <laughs> like, obviously, you need to crit a ray team to get rid of inspiration, right? Um, which is a very key yeah. part of Ray's kit to Ray's mastery and to counterattack if you've got. Whereas Bagbro, Finn, or whatever, right? So not being able to crit is it's it's pretty useful. It's going to be yeah. awful, awful to deal with. I think you're going to have to take in what with a weapon stack or something with no, that prevents revives. I think whenever yeah. you're going up against Ray, yeah. JNK cat, no revive cron. Actually, that's about to disappear. That's, yeah, that's yeah. going to that's that's go it? away next week. Ooh. Well, in seven days. And so, and and keep in mind, everybody has Ray. Like I know you guys are talking end game. Everybody has Ray now down to like people that have been yep, playing yep. the game for, for six months total. Um, mm. So with the with the so this is going to be like across the board, and I wonder if it's going to reflect kind of like the boost data cron where it just mm. makes Ray like this complete. Like everybody goes to get the Ray data cron, everybody's got it, and and it just makes her this complete truck on defense for the next six months. Mm. You know, I mean, yeah, I I think I think it in. For, for the earlier game players, I think that's definitely going to be the case. The thing that's ticking in my mind for those sort of Kyber 2, Kyber 1 players, late game rosters, you just use Malakos because Malakos prevents revives anyway and he counters Ray as it is. So maybe, you know, the fact that you can't crit and all the additional health and protection and all the additional um, health steal that you'll have on these sets might stop Malakos from working, but I, I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, but I think that's what end game players are probably going to be using to kill Ray because if he defeats her, there's no revives. Um, so, and Rox does a lot of damage. Rox does a lot of damage. So, yes. Other than yeah. that, I think, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I got to get the sure. kid one more time. And then when I come back, we'll do movies. So, you guys want to keep talking about Datacrons for another minute here? Uh, Everybody's favorite sexiest subject. topic ever, Datacron. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I, I just back to the their five Jedi datacrons as far as yeah. I could tell, and uh, so it, it's interesting that the Jedi faction is huge in the game. There are mm, there are massive. lots of them, right? But of the five datacrons, we got back Jedi Knight Cal and Cam. Now mm -hmm. a lot of veteran players will have Cam, of course, but yeah. like my account, my main account is twelve million GP almost, and I still mm -hmm. don't have Cam because I was mm -hmm. never in a guild that really farmed Cam. Like we we as soon as we could jump to Rise of the Empire, we did. Or when I joined that guild, everyone there already had Cam. If you are a newer player, I just recently talked about this on my channel. Cam is incredibly inaccessible right now. Oh um, god, gotcha. it, yeah. He is over a year farm unless mm -hmm. you are really cranking out a lot of the get 
the guild tokens. And even then, you have to dedicate every guild token to it. So it's get three, isn't it? Cam it's is, get three, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the get three, yeah. I've, I'm farming it with that. It's crazy. 2,150 of those get threes for five shards. So Oof. a lot of people will be lucky to farm 10 cam shards a month, 30 if you're gung-ho for it, 35 if you're maybe in a really solid guild. Otherwise, yeah, it's a year to a year and a half farm. So That's brutal. Yeah, so so we got Cam, Jedi Knight Cal, which again most people don't have. Cal and back, most people definitely don't have. Mm. That only leaves Mace and Kit. So I I mean I, I'm speculating, but I see four of those five being in the Naboo raid. Uh and I and no I think problem. that this is yeah. Well, yeah. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Kellen Beck is in the is in the raid. We, we, Cal Kestis won't be. But Kit Fisto, no. Kiadi Mundi, Mace, these are all quite likely. Yeah. I think Keller and Beck probably yeah. will be, not because he was in the film, because he obviously wasn't, but because he's a relatively new Galactic right. Republic Jedi. Why not incentivize it? Yeah. Right. Well, he was in the film. He was the voice of Jar Jar, so we got that. It's because he's a... It's be <laughs> Technically, he is in the film. Yeah. It's money. It's money. Come on. <laughs> it's money. It's money, money. But yeah, so the, point, the ultimate point of that, though, is this is going to be potentially a very inaccessible raid. Whereas the speeder bike one was actually quite accessible, right? Because so mm -hmm. if if Beck is there, if uh, Cam is there, you know the the Master Qui Gon, Padawan Obi Wan, Amidala for sure. We know those three. The five Gungans. I mean, we're already looking at half the roster of the raid if they stick to the same number as the previous two. Brand new. Uh, yeah, it's going to be very inaccessible. So mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So anyway. Positive news. I think we should jump to uh, your movie rankings. Ooh. Hang on while I change the screen. Oh, <laughs> done. Oh. All right. <laughs> you guys can't even see what's happening. All right. So <laughs> no. <laughs> let's do it. This is my favorite. This is what I look forward to every week, every so, two weeks. So, yep. So there are 11 feature films. Obviously, the Skywalker Saga plus Solo and Rogue One. Now, I yep. heard through the grapevine that the film you liked the least was um, uh, The Empire Strikes Back. And I find that hard to believe. So uh, can you... That's uh, what? <laughs> no, okay, that's my good. favorite. Just checking. <laughs> what the Lord? Yeah, Empire Strikes Back has got to be peak, man. Like, there's uh, so, so many... The list. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no, I sorry. Mean, I was saying number one. Sorry. I, uh, yeah. It's this ah, just okay, got okay. so many iconic moments in it, man. Like it has to be, has to be number one. Yeah. See, Gerbil. So, what's number eleven? <laughs> what is the least liked in Scribe World? Oh god, the one that I, sucks, I'm... the one that you hate, the one. I mean, I, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the standard guy that's like, yeah, the last Jedi, it sucks. I'm not gonna bandwagon on that. I'll be honest, like. Some of the prequel content just doesn't vibe with me. It's 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 going to be a toss up between the Last Jedi because it's I find it kind of dull, um, the Phantom Menace and Clone Wars, and I probably Clone Wars lower than Phantom Menace. I would guess it's 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 a toss up between Clone Wars and um, Attack of the Clones. Sorry, not Clone Wars and um, Last Jedi, and I'm not sure which. I'm not sure which. I do the same thing with Attack of the Clones and Clone Wars, but yeah, it's so so yeah. easy to make that mistake. Well, let's let's talk about both of us. So let's talk about why Attack of the Clones. We'll we'll just say they're ten and eleven, whatever order. So why Attack of the Clones? Uh, Attack of the Clones. Like I think we all know that the dialogue is very cringy for for a lot of it. It's hard hard to get through. And the other side of it is is it doesn't have Duel of the Fates in it. So I mean, it doesn't have that redeeming massive lightsaber battle. Instead, we yeah, do get yeah. a battle at the end with. Dooku and Anakin and Kenobi and then GMY comes in, but it, it doesn't like the stakes don't feel anywhere near as high. I feel like the pacing is completely off. It's just kind of like yeah, yeah, sort of thing. And the Panak um, is it Panaka Arena? I think that's how, how it's pronounced. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know what it's called. Um, and Geonos, I don't know. I just Geonosis um, Arena is what I would call it. I yeah. always said the Bug Arena. There you go. <laughs> the Bug Arena. That's probably like the most entertaining part as far as action is concerned because you get to see like a whole bunch of Jedi and then Jango Fett just kind of fizzles out without much of a fight, literally loses his head in the middle of battle. Um, I, I don't know. It's yeah. just, 
between the dialogue and and the fe- the fact that it just feels kind of flat throughout a lot of it. That's probably why. Right. Probably why for me. And, and then that's, so, that's all fair points. Yeah. So why Last Jedi then? Uh, Last Jedi, I actually like quite a bit of Last Jedi. Just because I'm ranking these low doesn't mean I don't enjoy the films. I do actually enjoy all the films. Um, The Last Jedi I rank quite low because cohesively, it feels like somebody's just, you know, you know, like you start a story and then somebody wants to say, oh, what about if this happens? You're like, no, don't ruin my story. That's that's what it feels like has happened. It almost feels deliberate to the point that it's trying to undo things from the Force Awakens, and The Force Awakens, in my opinion, is actually a very enjoyable film if you take it for what it is, which is just like an homage to A New Hope. That's what it feels like. I went mm, to the cinema. Okay. I really enjoyed The Force Awakens. I thought, hey, it's great. It's basically A New Hope again, but it's still enjoyable, an enjoyable experience. The Last Jedi felt like all the stuff that you build up in the first film just kind of gets thrown out the window, and you're like, oh, why do I care? And then they killed the only good villain, and it's like, oh, I'm just not excited now. It does have some really nice cinematic moments, like Crate, the Planet Crate, really cool. Like the salt fields, you know, um, the the um, the throne room fight scene. Even though it, like choreography wise, it's got some silly mistakes, is really visually cool. Oh, it's um, good. It's enjoyable. It's, yeah, it just has its moments of a bit like uh, I feel like it's 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 too at odds with what's happened in the past, and it kind of disappoints me with some of the choices. Like I don't think they should have killed Snoke at all. Personally, that's, agreed. Uh, you know, I think he would have made a better villain long term. Plus, you just like you got Andy Serkis, voice acting and character, and you just throw him away. It's like, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, in in, in episode uh, was at seven when we see you know Kylo Ren bow down in that giant hologram of Snoke. Mm. There, it, it just it just oh, like who is this right? new emperor? What right? Like it it mm. really. I I was so excited to see where this goes. Mm. And then he just gets cut in half. And I was like, wow, that was anticlimactic. And then, you know, there was that that moment where was that it was Hux, right? Who was gonna go kill Kylo, and then Kylo got up. Now, I I liked Hux's character and I liked his sliminess. And I just I would just like really, really wanted to see more out of Hux. Mm-hmm. And in the end, he just well, shoots himself in the leg and or whatever. Hux started the first movie as like a Tarkin-esque figure, right? Mm-hmm. And and then yeah. to open Last Jedi, he's a cartoon character. You know, um, Poe is just trolling him in front of the entire First Order fleet, and he gets tossed around the bridge by Snoke. It's like, it was just like a complete... Anyway, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, I, yeah. On, honestly, I, I think they eviscerated Hux's character. Yeah. I agree. Like, yes. The first one, he was good. He was intimidating. He was. Uh, he seemed like people respected him. And then Last Jedi kind of Kipped away at that, and then Rise of Skywalker. They were just like, you know what? You're a meme. That's your entire yeah. purpose. You were just petty. Yes. You know, like it's just like, why do you have to do that? He's a good character. Like, I mean, he was originally, and they kind of ruined him. Yeah, um, yeah. Big sad. Big sad. All right. So for eleven and ten and nine, mm-hmm. we have in whatever order: uh, the Last Jedi, mm-hmm. Attack of the Clones, and Phantom Menace. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Phantom Menace does have a lot of it. it. It introduces a bunch of cool characters, right? And it also introduces Jar Jar. Take that what you will. Um, <laughs> and Ascension Guns. <laughs> and Ascension Guns. Boom, was like, fired! No, the, the thing about Phantom Menace is it does introduce a lot of characters that I do really, really like. Like, Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi is probably my favorite Star Wars character across all platforms. He's just cool, all right? You know, like. I'm Team Obi. Um, having Liam Neeson as Qui Gon Jinn, great performance. Really enjoyed it. The fact that yes, he has, yes. you know, he's the sacrifice guy. He's the mentor that loses. He plays a really pivotal role in sort of the overarching story. Good. Introduced Maul, who I'll be honest, Maul in the Phantom Menace, he, he's just eye candy. He's not a character. He doesn't have a plot. He doesn't have character development. He's this is a big bad who doesn't even talk while he says, you know, finally we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. That that's his character development, and then he kills Qui Gon Jinn. So everything, everybody's fanboying about Maul happened afterwards. That's true. Mm-hmm. In the Phantom Menace, yeah. he's just there for a really cool fight scene and to look like a badass, and that's okay. But it doesn't really add much to the film outside of one of the best lightsaber duels that we've ever had. Um, so it's kind of like eh, that with more cringy dialogue. Are you an angel? It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> dear me, dear me. 
Well, at least we know they have angels in a galaxy far, far away also, right? And, and the, sand. The, what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were a couple of things that I left the theater, though, just kind of revolted over. What was like uh, that Amidala's ship was uh, an SR-71 Blackbird with chrome. Ooh. I just could not get over that. Never it is the that. same. It is just a Blackbird. Uh, and then the other one, was, well, the Ascension guns, I, was, I just can't get over that. Now they're in game. But then the, the other one was force speed. Like, we're at a standoff, force speed. And they're offside, <laughs> exit stage left. And I was like, what was that? And then because they introduced it in the beginning of the field, I was like, why didn't they use it at the end when they're running between those force fields and, you know, pausing? Like, they... I think it's because they're still really tired from doing it once because we never saw it again. They're like, God, Ever, that full speed, you. man. Yeah, because <laughs> why would you you'd be using that all the time? They'd be like, that'd be the main ability they have, actually. I'd be using it to go down the shops, you know, get some milk. Right. And, you know, <laughs> halfway through exactly. cooking, like, oh, I don't have any peppers. <laughs> like, you don't have to really? pay for it if you take it that fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old five finger discount. All right. So, what's number, what comes in at number nope. eight? Oh, see, we get the the higher up we go, I think it starts to get a little bit tricky. Um, mm. Ooh, what does come in at number eight? I don't want to say mm, Rise of Skywalker. Probably, I don't think I want to send that any higher than that. Like, I'm not somebody that despises the sequels. I actually quite enjoy the sequels, and I think actually Rise of Skywalker had some really cool moments. I think a lot of the hate for Rise of Skywalker comes from um, bandwagoning more than anything. It's just like, yeah, we hate Rise of Like a bunch of people that I spoke to right after they came out of the cinema watching Rise of Skywalker were like, that was awesome. That was really cool. I know people that saw it multiple times, and now now they say, oh, it's, it's terrible. It sucks. It's like you weren't saying that when yeah. you first watched it. Um, it just it has some moments in it which are just kind of like, well, this is just a little bit dumb, really. Like the fact that they didn't even know who uh, Ray's lineage was. I don't like the fact that it's Palpatine. I would have preferred it to actually be something new so we can actually break away from yes. the Skywalker saga. Yep. Not everything has to be Skywalker-based, right? There's, we can we can have new people that are powerful. That's okay. Be brave, Disney. You can do it. I believe in you. Um, so that bit is kind of like, yeah, I the whole back and forth thing, like, I'm going to sacrifice myself to you, and then I'm going to revive you, and I'm like, no, you! Like, it's... Pick a lane, guys. Pick a lane. Somebody's going to die. Like, it's okay. Um, yeah, it's just C dying in a really stupid way. Kind of like, yes. Why don't, why not just cut off the electricity, dude? That's okay too. You don't have to keep <laughs> disintegrating yourself. You know, it's choices like that. Cinemat it's cinematically, again, I think there are moments like Exegol looks freaking sick. You know, the, the, the actual um, CGI work that they put in is really good. Um, but then there's, there's just stupid stuff. Again, I think it's a lack of cohesion. Like, Last Jedi threw out a bunch of stuff. J.J. Abrams comes back and is like, no, I want to reinstate my stuff. I know you set up a complete romance plot line between Rose Tico and Finn that nobody asked for, but I'm going to completely ignore it so much that it looks incredibly awkward. I'm not even going to acknowledge that they had that moment on crate. It's just stuff like that that takes you out of it, and you're like, eh, why, though? Just why? Yeah, um, fair enough. You know, what's interesting is that you're absolutely right. Crowdsourcing information and talking online can absolutely sway public opinion mm -hmm. uh, because there are a lot of these conversations we've had where I have heard people say, well, what you just did, I went to the theater and I really enjoyed it. And then I got online and then mm -hmm. I started hearing everyone pointing out all the flaws and now I can't stand it or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, as you're, as you're talking about your list here, I'm looking at uh, Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb, and I'm and I'm seeing how they're ranked there by the non-Swaga community because it's a broader, more generalized public, and mm -hmm. their rankings are completely different. It's really okay. interesting. That's a good conversation for a future episode. But for right now, number seven. Number seven. Um, what films have I got left? Obviously, we've got we've got Return of the Jedi. We've got New he Hope. didn't make we've a list, got... Gerbil. He didn't make a list. <laughs> I, I, I can see no, that. No, I can I, see I'm, that. I'm, I'm, I'm adlib in my list. It's the up best here. way to be. At least you know it's organic. Oh, he's admitting it. At least you know it's organic, right? <laughs> um, you, you, know, you got Rogue shit, One but... and Solo. Oh, we are doing Rogue One and Solo as well. Yeah, so okay. you have everything except um, um, Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones and Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. Hmm. Okay, I'd probably go... 
Hmm. Well, fish face there. I don't know what. It's it's my thinking fish face. Really? It's my thinking fish face. Yeah. What does Mrs. Scribble well, think? Thinking. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Solo, I think. I think Solo. Like, Solo is actually Good a choice. decent film. I agree. Um, yeah. I don't think it's terrible. I think it's a, a quite enjoyable, um, like, Cowboys in Space romp out there in the middle of nowhere. Um, I think it was poorly delivered when it came out. The choice of when to actually put it out um, in, in theaters yes. was poorly timed. Yes. It came out after The Last Jedi, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So I think yeah, it was it was back to back Star Wars, Wars. and and yeah. wasn't it like yeah. and there was like, other didn't you? I'm sorry, Jeremy. I think you're about to say it wasn't it released at the same time as like some other big blockbusters too. Yeah, there was something massive yeah. came out right after it. Yeah, I think it was Avengers. One of the Avengers, oh. like the uh, might have been Age of Ultron. Thanos. Or or was it Infinity no, it War? It wasn't that one. I think it was Infinity War. Oh, if it was uh, Infinity it War, got... Solo stood no chance. <laughs> like... <laughs> Nobody would go and watch it. Yeah, so Solo came out in uh, May 2018. Mm -hmm. And then the Avengers movies release dates. Uh, so May 2018. Oh, here we go. In what order do we want to watch these? Man, Nooch is also searching too. We're like, what, what, happened? what happened? What happened? Yeah, 2018. Um, yeah, Infinity War. Infinity War. Came okay, out yeah. It's April kind of a big 25th. deal. So three, oh, yeah. three weeks after Infinity War. So, and, and that, that movie was Rewatching such... that before they would go and see Solo. <laughs> right. And then, you know, we, it, we also, a lot of people will point out some of the flaws that are in a, in a Star Wars movie. What a lot of people also don't sometimes understand or recognize too, is that it, uh, Disney was competing with itself here. Disney owns the Star Wars franchise. It owns the Avengers franchise. So it yeah. literally released it it itself, whether it was it's intentional or not, crippled Solo. its own views. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. So it was a bad timing, and it was a bad internal company choice. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it's a shame because I did actually enjoy it. To be honest, I think there there was always a risk with doing uh, a prequel with with Han Solo where nobody's going to ha be happy with a young Han Solo. They're like, Harrison Ford is Han Solo. How dare you have, I can't remember his name, Aaron Eckhart or something like that? Yeah. I can't remember his name. Um, yeah. The, Alden, even if Aaron, he does a, Alden Ehrenreich. Oh, that's it. Yeah. That guy. Great name. Um, <laughs> nobody is, you're never going to please everybody replacing an iconic character like that. But realistically, they're not exactly going to get, you know, Harrison Ford to come back in and play a young Han Solo. That, that just wouldn't work unless they did a bunch of CGI. And no. we've seen what their CGI looks, their de-aging technology. It's sketchy even at best. Um, so yeah. I'm glad they went and recast. But I, I just think it's a decent film, not amazing. And it, it came out in in poorly timed. And, you know, it's just you're not ever going to please everybody with it. But overall, I did enjoy it. Well, I like that sort of film. I loved you know? I love Donald Glover as young Lando. Yeah, absolutely. And I was super stoked when they said that there was going to be a Lando spinoff TV show, but I believe that that got canceled. I don't know if it's going forward or not. They all but get that canceled. That was great. I, did they? Everything? No, everything they announced gets canceled anymore. That's uh, that. Well, know. here's a game canceled. Here's a they show. Yeah. Uh, the the yeah. games get canceled I, all the time. I, I loved Woody Harrelson's character. My problem there, though, was I couldn't stop seeing him in his other roles. And that was actually yeah. something that Lucas tried to avoid in the original series. Like, he mm -hmm. he casted a lot of people. He he turned down big names uh, in the sequels and stuff because he, he wanted to maintain an original cast, largely, of people, you know, mm -hmm. that, that didn't have face recognition. Um, and Woody Harrelson, um, Amelia Clark. Uh, I'm trying to think who else was there. there. There were several of them in there that I like. I know them, and I couldn't stop Old seeing Danny. them, and that that distracted. Mm, yeah, for some reason, I I kept on seeing Woody Harrelson as as his character in Zombieland. <laughs> it was just uh, like I see that, and I see the guy in Zombieland, I just, and I love Zombieland. Oh. That's a great film. Um, but yeah, yeah. Linda Hunt. I love there. Zombieland. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's let's keep it. So. Number six. So you've Number got six. the original trilogy. You've got Rogue One, mm. um, Revenge of the Sith, and uh, Force Awakens. That's what you got left. Force Awakens. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to go re- a little bit of Return of the Jedi next. All right. Oh, Return of the Jedi. Right, mm. No. <laughs> Look at that time. Mm. Yeah, time well, to go. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just after Empire Strikes Back, Strikes Back, you, you're setting yourself up for failure, really, aren't you? It's like it's kind of like an Endgame Infinity War situation. Infinity War was so amazing. And Endgame is still a very, very good film. I and it wraps up things very nicely. But you, you got big shoes to fill at that point. I don't think it was as strong yeah. as Empire Strikes Back. I think it's still very enjoyable. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree know. with you in, in terms of like scripting, uh, storylines, uh, you know, character arcs. I agree with you. Mm. Um, just doesn't I mean, it have does my have friends. Works. Yes. <laughs> But they can't save the film. I'm sorry. I'd say it's closer to like an Avengers and Age of Ultron situation, like first Avengers and Age of Ultron. Like it was like. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, because it is a bit of a, a drop off. I, it's a bit weird to be running around on a forest planet with a bunch of murder bears that want to eat you. So, and, well, and then they beat the Imperial you know, in, Army. In the recent. <laughs> with in, sticks. In a, recently, with one of our guests also talked about. The revisions to the movies too. Uh, like if you, I think if you had mm. seen the original movie in in its original date and broadcast quality versus a modern version of it, yeah, yeah. the Ewoks simply they do not age well because the costuming was never really high quality to begin with, right? And mm. then, like some of the music, the music got changed. You know, the Yubnub song is gone. I do not like the revised version nearly as much as the childhood original. It, it's, it's just weird. I still maintain they neutered uh, Princess Leia's character. Like, she is so boring in that movie, and she doesn't, mm. yeah. you know, in the first two movies, she is like all over these guys and just hammering them yeah. constantly. And in the Return of the Jedi, she's just like, she gets kidnapped, yeah. a joke not, here and there, but she's so wispy and wistful. And it's like, ugh. not the same uh, Leia that took the gun off. And said, I'll rescue myself sort right. of business, you know? Right. Like, that, but these different. are my friends. Uh, yeah, no, she would have been untying them herself if it was the same personality. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Please don't eat them. They are my friends. Numa, number five. Number five. Back to the thinking fish now. Um, back to the thinking fish. Um, I might go with... It's tough. It's tough at the top. Take your time. I'm reading Amidala's kit. It's okay. I so got you've got you got. <laughs> oh God, we've got hours. Then you got <laughs> Force Awakens. You've got <laughs> yep. um, Empire, A New Hope, Rogue New Hope. One, and well, Empire was one, right? Empire. Empire all right, all right. So we we rule Empire. So you've got Force Awakens, New Hope, um, Revenge of the Sith, and Rogue One. They're all good. That's the problem. They're all mm-hmm. good. Um. I want to go with. Oh, I'm gonna go with. It's okay. You can Force do this. Force Awakens. Force Awakens. You I should. Think. You should go with Force yeah. Awakens. Yeah. 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 Because good call. It was, let's let's it, knock that out. It it is it is good, <coughs> but I have to I have to limit it based on the scope of the of the sequel trilogy as well as it's not exactly an original story either. So it's kind of like it's. I enjoyed it, but treading over well, old what, ground. What do you mean? What's not original with it? It's like you know. <laughs> what's not original with it? It, it it's literally it's a classic new coming hope. of age desert so when, teen story. Right? When Han Solo yeah. looks at the big planet and says, "Ah, oh, we did this before. We'll take it out." <laughs> that's yeah. I mean, yeah, with, that's with new. the exhaust vent. <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 redone. I think. I, I think, in particular, some of the things that irk me is just the the sheer power level of of an untrained ray is just a little bit silly. Um, being able to mind trick yes. without even a knowledge of the force is kind of like I, I beg your pardon. Yeah, you just casually mind trick a soldier. All right, fine. You're you're beating somebody who's, you know, a Skywalker essentially, um, in a lightsaber duel, having never used a lightsaber in your life. All right, fine. I know he's injured, but still, it's kind of like stretching, stretching my suspension of belief a little bit. But I still enjoy it. I still enjoy it. I think it's a good film. So. I think uh, Harrison Ford carries, you know, and that's what that to me. That's what the movie's about. Harrison Ford, you know, he carries in most films he's in. He generally, well, yeah, <laughs> until the last two Indian movies. But that's a separate conversation. 
Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think he just maxed out his charisma stat. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he needs so, a cloak of charisma. charisma or something. <laughs> Speaking of the the no training mind control, do you know who the who played that stormtrooper? Yeah, wasn't it Daniel Craig? Or yes, something? it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah James, James Bond, Bond, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I want to be famous enough one day to be an uncredited stormtrooper in a future Star Wars product project. That's my life goal. I'm rooting I'm for you. Put that on the bucket list. <laughs> and then I can say, then I'll lean to my wife and I'll say, "Hey, I know that guy. <laughs> that guy. I I did a collab with that guy. Can you believe that? Yeah. E either that or be a voice actor like uh, Simon Pegg was the one quarter portion. He was in like, the costume too. Oh, he was actually yeah. in the costume. Yeah, so that. it's a full costume, and they they CGI'd his face because they couldn't. But but yeah, he was actually in that costume in the desert. He talks about how he was just sweating his yeah, like ten <laughs> twenty be. pounds a day or whatever. Yeah. Oh my days! Yeah, that that's yep. that's the height right. of aspiration for me. All right, number so, four. Number so four, we've right? got we we're number just four. so New Hope, Revenge mm -hmm. of the Sith, Rogue and Rogue One. One. Great choices. I. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could probably do this all out in one now. Um, oh, man. Just after an go, hour to think about it. Yeah, I'm going to go number two. I'm going to put Rogue One. I'm, I'm going to put Rogue One at number two. I, I think Rogue I, One I'm is fantastic. Um, yeah. and, and it goes to show as well that you can make a really good, engaging Star Wars film without having loads of Jedi and loads of Sith without having a bunch of Skywalker presence. It's just a good film. Um, it's got yep. some really good roles, and it, it, it ties into the overall story as well very well, which is nice. It's got some funky CGI in it with de-aging, but with it's Tarkin. enjoyable. Tarkin, Leia, it's like... Mm. Yeah. That, and that Vader scene is just like, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. The whole way Vader scene is just brutal. That's the Vader everybody's scared of right there. Um, yeah, so I'll put that at number two. Then I'll put Revenge of Sith at number three, and then I think it's New Hope at number four. Okay, that's probably how I'll go. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I that's think Rogue One. To me. Rogue One also gives you hope for Disney, like they can do it right, yeah. you know, yes. and they can do it amazing. Oh, yeah. um, it's just that they just, you know, whatever decisions they made with the sequels just weren't there. So, well, let's talk about the, the two, three, four. So, what about what about a New Hope? What's the what's the why is it coming forth? And I know you're you're like saying these are basically equal, is what it sounds like to me. But you gotta yeah, rank it's them. hard. It's it's hard to to make a decision at this. Um, I mean, it's all the way up there because it started off everything for me. It was the very first Star Wars film I ever saw. And let's not pretend like um, nostalgia doesn't play a role in this, right? Oh, it's huge, of course. Your your introduction to anything that you you enjoy and become a fan of is going to you know color your perception of it. So it's good. It's you know it introduces characters. Yes, it's still got some little bit gnarly dialogue, but it's not cringy dialogue. I feel <laughs> like it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But it I, I don't know. For me, it's just the warm and fuzzies getting introduced to characters like C three PO for the first time. You know, seeing a badass princess rescuing herself is really cool having, you know, a mentor blowing up a Death Star. It's still just like, it's it's just warm. It's like, oh, it's a feel-good film. It is. <laughs> so, I, I, oh, geez. Yeah. Have, have you all seen the parody scene, you know, where uh, old Ben is explaining to Luke about his dad, right? Uh, but there's a parody on YouTube where old Ben has changed the entire story and he's like, he's like, yes, your dad and I killed Boba Fett. And, or, no, 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 it wasn't Boba Fett. It was... um. Django Fett. Oh, I lost it. Oh. Django Fett. Was, no, no, it wasn't even Django. I don't remember. I don't remember. I'll, I'll find the link and I'll post it in the Discord. It's hilarious though, because he's all he's all like, uh, Django Fett used his contract money to hire another bounty hunter who used their contract money to hire another bounty hunter who used a contract oh, money I've to hire that. a droid that cut a hole in the window that could have killed Amidala, but instead used its contract money to hire a worm. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. I, I have seen that. It's like, yeah, Django Fett was originally going to kill Padme, but he hired someone else who hired someone else who hired someone else who hired a worm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that is good. I, I have seen that a while back. Beautifully yeah. done. But I, I think I think A New Hope is harder, though, for uh, a lot of the younger viewers to get into because yeah, it, right. it is a slower pace film for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when you compare, like, fight choreography, yeah, it's like... it. it it's dated. It's not what you would expect from, you know, 
especially if you've watched something like the the prequels, where mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm a massive fan of the style, but there's a, there's a lot of flash, right? There's a lot of flash, a lot of um, fancy blade work, as it were, in in the in the in the prequels. Sorry, that doesn't really get replicated in the sequels, and it certainly isn't in the original trilogy, which is more like fencing rather than right. sword fighting. Um, so it's not yeah. as it's not the, as flashy out there, you know. The original so series, the, the the lightsaber duels are much more realistically accurate if you had a Probably. moderately weighted sword. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. No, it's Instead true. Of of I, 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 I didn't yeah. disagree. I'm laughing. Yeah. I mean, I, I still can't look at that scene in the battle on Mustafar where Obi Wan and Anakin are just waving their swords in front of each other, not even touching each other, just stood there for about thirty seconds, and you're like. What are you doing? <laughs> like, like, hit him. <laughs> They're waiting for an opening. They're trying to find an opening. They're in each other's minds. They've trained exact. All right. Well, so let's talk about Revenge of the Sith. So that's third. So what's what's the deal there? Tell us about Revenge of the Sith. That's, that's just epic. Like, it's a, it's the conclusion. It's how we get Vader. You know, like as there's still cringy dialogue in it, but the stakes are so much higher. The orchestral pieces are so good. The fight on Mustafar is like who who like when when you're watching like Clone Wars and and the uh, and Phantom Menace, right? Who isn't looking at that thinking, "Wow, I wonder who'd win in a fight between Anakin and Obi Wan?" And you get to see it, and it's just like full throttle, and it goes on for minutes as well. It's such a cool scene, and it's nice. It's I know as as heartbreaking as it is, it's it's cool to see Anakin fall. And I think it shocked a lot of people seeing him murder a bunch of kids. Like it's like it shocked Big Dynasty, that's for sure. Really? He was shot. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> yeah, it. He hates that movie because it, they it, destroyed his hero. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bit. I know. It's true. Uh, whereas I'm like, yes, <laughs> exactly. Destroy people's most heroes. Of us are. <laughs> Let's see them fall. Join me in the darkness. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think it's awesome. I think it was brave of them brave them to go that that far you know um and yeah it just it's satisfying seeing how the how it feeds into a new hope how the story begins sort of thing and you can you get a feel for why everybody is scared and fearful of vader it's like yeah that's that's cool that's cool so yeah answer some questions and i think overall it's just a satisfying experience Great. and conclusion to the uh, the prequels after um, the first two were for me just a little bit Flashy and flat. Yeah. Well, well, we talked Rogue Amadella's One. Kid has helped me understand the value of the Ascension Gun now, though, because it helps you get the high ground, and that's it, it definitely does. a lesson true. Kenobi learned. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they could have had one. Only knows. Yeah, they could have had uh, Padme like standing on a ledge above the everybody else, like you could just see her feet or something dangling from the rafters. Yeah, like oh, <laughs> like they did in the bloopers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the ability could have been Kenobi, come take the high ground <laughs> and then Ascension. <laughs> All right, uh, Scribe, let's talk about Empire Strikes Back because it's my number one, too, and it always will be. So let's let's hear it. Oh, man. Well, what's not to like about Empire Strikes Back, to be honest? Mm -hmm. Like, people had their appetite whetted, as it were, by uh, A New Hope. Then you get to go over to Hoth. Hoth is such an amazing landscape. You meet Wampa. You get hung upside down. You see Luke use the force to pull his lightsaber out and save himself, cut off the hand of Wampa. You get iconic, you know, I am your father. You get to jump down a large elevator shaft. It's just like there's so many epic moments in that film that it's just, I, I don't know how it gets beat by a modern, modern day Star Wars film unless they do something brand new, you know? And even then, it, it's, it's pretty tough to beat, you know? Han and Leia. Falling in love, which might be a little bit confusing for people that watch the first film. You're like, wait a minute. Uh, okay. Yeah, she's my sister. That's awkward. Um, <laughs> getting frozen in carbonite. It's just, I don't know. I, I don't even know where to begin. Being able to take out the um, the AT-80s with the, uh, with the, is it the A-wings they use there? I can't remember the no, name. Snow speeders. The snow the speeders. Snow oh. speeders. Yeah. Well, whatever they are. Um, like, it's just, it's just cool and seeing Luke jump up inside one and stuff. It's like, oh, I love it. I just love everything about it. 
It's good stuff. I think Cloud City always stuck in my head just as a oh, really, yeah. really cool backdrop. Mm-hmm. I loved like the, the the interior, like simplicity of the design, um, yeah. and especially being in the clouds and, and couple that with Lando's characteristic of just being so suave, right? And so mm-hmm. smooth at everything. I thought that was so cool. Yeah, you introduced Lando and Boba Fett basically right in the same, mm-hmm. you know, and then they're face to face at one point, which is such a I, I mean when I look at like the pictures and stuff, when you see Lando looking right at Boba Fett and that if you just look at a picture of that, it's just so cool looking. The colors, it's like orange in the background mm-hmm. and you're like, here's these two cool like anyway, yeah, I yeah, I'm I'm on board, man. And Vader deflects a, a blaster bolt with his hand. He just goes Yeah, mm-hmm. why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he spills yeah. hands gun. He's like, Yeah, no, that's well, fine. And- yeah. There's so many good lines in there, right? Like, yeah. the, the, doesn't Vader say, "What is it, what is the line he says? We'd be honored if you join us for dinner." Or join us. Yeah, just we'd be honored yeah. if you join us. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, if you join us. Yeah, it's so smooth. And Boba Fett talking back to him is no good to me, dead. You know. <laughs> yeah, one of like the only two the, lines he says in the entire film. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, but it's a good one, and mm-hmm. and it shows the the you know the confidence that Boba has. To just speak up to a Sith Lord is like, you know, don't screw me. Like he's yeah. kind of, in a way, threatening Vader, right? So, got balls. Got balls. And that's, yeah. you know, why he became a fan favorite, even though, like I said, he had like two lines in the whole film. Can you see him for minutes? It's not yep. even seconds. Um, yeah, it's just, you get introduced to so many cool characters. Um, and the overall story arc is just really good. Um, yeah. Yep. I can't, can't knock it. I can't knock it at all. All right. Cool. Well, well, there you have it. Yeah. Gentlemen, you got anything to add to uh, to our conversations today? I'll take no. it as a no. So, hey, yeah. <laughs> Scribe, it was really good to see you again. It's been, I know it's been a while. We'll do, we got to do this more often, but it was good to get together this week. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on, guys. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yep. Gerbil, any wrap up for us? I know you're struggling a minute ago. I, I just popped it to you again. Sorry. The Clone Wars has the lowest rating on IMDb of all the Star Wars series and movies. We'll have IMDb. It's we'll do that maybe tidbit. next time. Look at the IMDb rating. That's it. That's a, <laughs> yeah. That could be fun. Is is that the animated film or is it Attack of the Clones? Yeah. Clone? Oh, I think it's a uh, oh. 2008 Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Oh, it's, yeah, that was uh, horrible. It's the first four I, episodes oh, of Clone Wars put into movie form, is what it is. Man. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, it's got a 19%. Uh, you'll never guess what the highest is. Strikes Back. Empire? You, you guys are not going to get it. Uh-oh. What? Empire Strikes Back, surely. Star Wars Rebels, 98% positive. Well, but that's wow. not a movie. That's the show, right? No. Well, this is, this is Rotten Tomatoes reviews, which is not, of course, mm. the definitive source. But... It does, as I was saying earlier, it does show the difference, though, between the diehards, uh, the gamers and the loyalists and the general public. Um, I I personally love Rebels. I think the Rebels series is one of the best Star Wars series out there. Uh, It's really great music, wonderful music. If you're a musician, you you really would like the music. But uh, anyway, that's a whole nother show, another topic. That sounds good. Yeah, we got to get running here, I I assume. Well, I do anyway, but Yeah. um, yeah. Hey, this was fun. It was really good to get together and uh, have a good talk. And we'll look forward to Padme and uh, Datacrons and 100,000 max protection extra. Anyway, so boys, girls, yeah. ladies, and gentlemen, have a great day. We will all talk to you soon. We'll see you out there. Make sure to check out Scribe's channel for sure. And of course, always remember Nooch and Gerbil and uh, Scribble. Too good.